In this video, I'll demonstrate and explain a few programming tips to help you get a more refined application solution with the MPIEC controllers. Hi, I'm Matt Pelletier. Here's a quick preview. The MPIEC controllers can be programmed to read specific and unique information about the controller itself, produce custom alarms on the controller, and record text to the web UI. You can control the seven segment LED display on the front panel and read alarm text descriptions from a built in database on the controller. It's also possible to change the logo in the web UI for custom branding. Now let's look at this in more detail. The system variable named controller contains specific and unique information about the controller itself. It is located in the global variable list under system variables. The data type is controller info and it exists at a specific percent %m address. I have added this variable to the watch window so you can see some of the elements of the data structure. The info is organized by firmware, configuration, hardware, network, and diagnostics. I'm not going to read through them all, but you'll see that a lot of the information exists as arrays of bytes or arrays of integers, unsigned integers. One practical use for this variable is to display some of the data elements in the HMI for verification, such as the controller IP address. You could send this array of bytes directly to the HMI, or it may be easier to use the buff to string block from the Prokonos firmware library to convert the array to a string, as I'm doing here. It's a pretty simple task to bring any controller variable into Yaskawa's Movicon environment for display in the HMI. You could also use specific controller information, such as the version number, to ensure that the correct firmware version is installed, or use the MAC address to allow only specific controller hardware to be used with your project. Here I'm checking part of the controller's unique MAC address, and the result could be used to disable the machine, effectively preventing unauthorized duplication of the code to new controllers. The controller info variable is available to new projects starting with version 3.6. If the project was started with an older version, you can manually create this controller variable. Just be sure to use the controller info data type and the correct address. Custom alarms can be generated by the program using the Y post user alarm function block. I'll continue the MAC address verification in this example. Let's say the MAC address does not match, therefore MAC address not authorized. Now here's the Y post user alarm block, and I've arbitrarily set the alarm error ID to hexadecimal ABCD, and alarm source contains the alarm text. I'll execute that block. And you'll be able to see now in the web UI that the controller has entered the alarm state. The error ID hex code matches the function block input, and the source contains the alarm text. I will clear the alarm, but you'll see the alarm history still records the occurrence of this alarm. For IEC controllers with battery backed SRAM, this alarm will remain in the alarm history even after power cycle until the history is cleared. With this block, the programmer can create any number of application level alarms, resulting in high level customization and refinement of the control system diagnostics. Y post user alarm is part of the Y motion firmware library in version 3.6 and higher. System diagnostics can be further refined by recording text to the web UI debugging output. In the web UI under status, you have debugging output. Now I'll execute ydebugprint. 
and refresh the debugging output. And you see the message was sent to the controller. You can save the file if you like. With ydebug print, any important condition can be detected in the code and leave a record of it here in the web UI. For example, e-stop pressed, low material, or an error state, as I just demonstrated. Whatever the condition, you can program a customized message for the debugging output. These messages make it a lot easier to troubleshoot using only the web browser. Keep in mind, however, that the debugging output is not stored in battery-backed SRAM, and it is cleared at every power cycle. YDebugPrint is found in the YDevice.com firmware library and requires firmware 3.2 and higher. Another useful way to write text to the controller is through the seven-segment LED display on the front panel of the controller itself. You may know that the test switch causes the IP address to scroll across the front panel, as it's doing right now. But the Y write 7 LED message block can be used to override this with a custom message. Here I have the message unauthorized controller with some creative capitalization and substitution for ASCII characters that cannot be displayed on a seven segment LED. Now I'll execute the block and you can see the message. The time inputs to the block control the number of milliseconds each character in the string will display and the blank time between the characters and the time for the final character of the string. To clear it, I'll execute with clear true to remove the message and it's back to the IP address. It's also possible to create simple LED animations and customized characters by turning on LED segments individually. These front panel messages can help draw attention to the machine status and expedite troubleshooting without any software tools. Y write 7 LED message is part of the Y motion firmware library available in version 3.6 and higher. The alarm description message text exists in a database on the controller. When there is an alarm, you can access these descriptions using the block Y get alarm desk. You see in the web UI, the controller shows the alarm right now AD00 position deviation overflow for axis X. Notice the error class 3303 and the axis error ID 0D00. Back in the program, I am using the standard MC read access error block to find that access error ID and error class and then combine those into one alarm code. This alarm code is the input for the Y get alarm desk block. It produces two string outputs, a short description and a long description of the alarm, just like you would see in the web UI. These descriptive strings could also be sent to an HMI very easily. And this allows for rapid diagnostics and troubleshooting of the control system directly from the HMI without the need to maintain a separate database of alarm codes and descriptions. Now, as an aside, there are blocks in the PACML toolbox, which could also be used to retrieve the short description. The text database for this method, however, resides in the toolbox library itself. Updates to the database, therefore, depend on the version of PACML toolbox. Updates for Y get alarm desk depend only on the controller firmware level. Y get alarm desk is part of the Y motion firmware library, available in version 3.7 and higher. It is also possible now to change the Yaskawa logo in the web UI to give your application a nice touch of refinement and custom branding. The logo image must be 25 by 125 pixels in PNG format and have the name custom underscore logo. The logo is changed entirely within the web UI. 
you do have to log in for this. And then under Setup Files, go to Flash Local and add the directory called custom underscore logo. So here's my custom underscore logo. It's just a black Yaskawa banner with dimensions 125 by 25. Now I'll navigate into the custom logo folder. So you got flash local custom logo, add files, choose that file and click send. Now when you refresh, the new logo appears. The logo in the web UI can be changed like this in firmware 3.6 and higher. I hope you'll use some of these programming tips to make your next MPIEC machine more reliable and refined. Thanks for watching this video and go to yaskawa.com slash IECSW to download the latest version of MotionWorks IEC 3.